All right, welcome back. This is Cosmic Lion Radio. I'm Eli Schwab coming to you from sunny California, and we have some amazing guests from across the pond, I guess they say. We have a huge panel of Canadians, our friends from the north, and to them, I'm their friend from the south. So it's great to be here. It's great to have everyone here. Let's check in with the gallery. What's up, everyone? Woohoo! All right, so our main guests today are the Carpos Collective, Julia, Joyce, and Sheryls. So what's up, y'all? Howdy. Hey. Hi. What's up? All right, and we've got our guests. We have our esteemed panel of Rick Lopez, Jerome Cabanatan, and Jason Lapidus. And our guests, Burgess, Brent, Rose, Roe, sorry, God, Roe, Sonny, Dean, and Lois. What's up, everyone? <laughs> Yay. I, I said ahead. Rose, plural. <laughs> <laughs> all Rose right, is okay. everyone. <laughs> Good to have you all here. Um, what I'm going to do to start off right now is I'm going to mute all. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so now everyone's muted and I can just jabber and jabber and talk. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to unmute the Carpos Collective right now and we're going to get into some questions with them. Then, we will go to our esteemed panel for more. All right, so is the Carpos Collective unmuted? Yeah. Totally awesome. So let's start off a little bit. Now, first I wanna say we all met, including Jerome and um, Jason at the WITCAF panel about teamwork. So I do wanna talk a little bit about teamwork starting with where your team began. Now I did a little research and I found that it started in a writing class. So tell us a little bit about that writing class, what y'all felt like when you first met, and then what was that spark that you guys were like, let's collect our talents? Uh, Who should begin? <laughs> so, go for it, Julia. The romantic yeah. side, and then yeah. um, you guys can break it down into the more technical sides. Okay, okay. Joyce, take it away. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, in that, so the cool thing about OCAD, the school we went to, is that every floor is like a different major, a different field. And so if you're not in that field, you never go to that floor. So you don't actually intermingle with different people in different majors, different fields, all that kind of stuff, except for when you have a collect, I mean, uh, what's the elective. word? No, no, no. Elective? Except minor, a minor. Yeah, minor? like minor or, or a selected course. What's the word? I'm blanking out. Elective. 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 Yeah. <laughs> elective. So unless you have an elective and so because we all chose the one elective that unites us we ended up in this course and then in that course the creative writing course was it creative writing no it yes. was it was it was, it was yeah and yeah. then we were uh going through the homework phases where you have to actually read your work out loud and stand up in class and then you share it everyone critiques it but then it's kind of long because everyone's sharing their own stuff. But then the three of us, we kind of like saw each other. We're like, huh, your stuff isn't too bad. And then we're like, oh, your stuff isn't too bad. And I think we all kind of knew we were the chosen ones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> After class, we would always want to write more. We would always be like, we should hang out more and write more. And so we started this huge writing group with the whole class, basically. But then only the three of us consistently sh showed up. And we would always go to these different cafes with like books on the walls and write and write. And so we started thinking like, hey, let's make this into something bigger. And that's when uh, Shirley came in with like a whole plan. And then Julia came in with a whole like goal. And it, it was great. Yeah. So if you guys want to take it, take over. Um, oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, oh, you, you, you go first. <laughs> oh, go I, talk a lot. <laughs> I talk a lot. So I'm going to let Shirley go first because I am like, okay. just, I go a lot. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, because I was already in the mindset of uh, grouping together some people for post-graduation. And so I've been on the lookout for a good like semester and a half. Um, and I just couldn't come up with the right people until we started meeting up for the writing group. And uh, yeah, and, and it just everything kind of just like fit right into all the right places. Um, and then uh, I just didn't expect the amount of enthusiasm that came from both of them. So I was super happy when they both were so enthusiastically involved. And 
and then we just kind of like took off from there and uh, Julia being our main uh, designer and illustrator uh, helped us with our first edition of our logo and um, our look yeah so go for it and go in detail um yeah so I mean uh shout out to Catherine Black uh our prof for that class who's like (laughs) angel honestly like would perish for Catherine Black like if she, if someone like held a bullet to my head or Catherine's, I'd be like, me first, dude. <laughs> like, take me, okay? She's oh, precious. She's we amazing. need to protect her, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we just kind of like started meeting up together and we realized that uh, we were kind of in it for like the long haul. Whereas right. like some other people would drop in and like h- hang out like once or twice and like that was great, right? But I mean, it really felt like a team, like I was getting like constructive feedback that wasn't just like, you know, destroying my emotions. Like, you know, this is awful. This is trash. Like it was actually really helpful um, to make me better. And it came from like a place of like respect and um, uh, love and appreciation um, and like a general earnest to um, improve and help that person improve. So I was really excited to like, you know, help start this uh this little collective here i thought oh man this is gonna be so cool i get to actually make art with people because the biggest thing is that after you graduate from a uh an art school the biggest problem is that people get disconnected Mm -hmm. and then you have no one to show your work to um and then you kind of live in this bubble where you don't improve anymore because no one's telling you what's wrong You know, it's just like your mom or like your sister or something who's like, hey, this looks amazing. It's beautiful. (laughs) Like it it could never be improved. And meanwhile, like back in school, it'd be like, "Um, actually, this is trash. I need to fix (laughs) this, 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 this and this. And that, you know, it sounds scary, but really it it helps you become a better artist like that feedback, getting that in. So um, I was really excited to like meet people who genuinely wanted to help me improve and like I wanted to help them improve and you know all that awesome and it seems like you all three kind of have your like uh specialty and that and that's what brings the collective part of it together is that you each kind of bring something like a little bit different so like bring a little bit different and then help those others with what their kind of like not weaknesses are but like their what what isn't their strengths so then like tell me what your you know your strength is and then what other help you bring to the collective or what, like, because I noticed that <laughs> on the site, there's different, there's different, you know, like there's zines, there's uh, jewelry, there's uh, books, there's the new children's book. So tell me about the breakdown of work and what everyone's doing. Um, I'll, so let me explain it in an abstract way. <laughs> <laughs> I already see some of the, the, uh, yeah, the difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the, the, the poetry of the group. Okay. <laughs> I do the words. I do the visual representation. I really like asking the constant question of what does it mean? It has to mean something. Like what's the core? What do we stand for? What gives us life? All of those questions. Mm-hmm. Whereas Shirley is the power suit. Um, she's all the business, the paperwork. <laughs> like it has to be sustainable in a, in a financial way. Um, it's all about how we can carry ourselves professionally. And then Julia is the, the whip cracker. She's like, oh my gosh, guys, we have nothing done. We need something to put on the table. Like, guys, there's this deadline coming up. Guys, there's this grant we need to apply for. We're so lazy. What are we doing? And then the three of us come together and create a whole. And the funny thing is we hate and we're so bad at all the other things that the other person is good at. So oh, it really, really helps us. At first, that was actually why we clashed so much because we're all trying to pull each other in a different way and we all don't get why the other person isn't caring as much about what we care about but once we figured out like wow like just even leaning on each other to fill those gaps every time they say we need to do this it's not a hey you're bad at this it's more like i'll take care of this for us and so that was great yeah (laughs) that's awesome that that's a great way to build your team and i've also found with really lasting friendships a lot of times they do start with like clashing and it's you know it's like you're butting heads and then all of a sudden you realize you know we're butting heads because we like are so similar similar or are so different and yet it's like the yin yang like you're all that side and i'm all this side but if we can work together yeah i think it 
it came, I mean, not to be that person, but I sure am that person. <laughs> um, I have a lot of like, not moods. I'm a very passionate person. Okay. <laughs> we'll say that very passionate and I'm sensitive and I get upset easy. Um, and I think like when things aren't happening the way that I think that they're going to happen and I don't understand the other side, I get very upset and upset either translates to crying or anger. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes those emotions happen because I'm hungry <laughs> or I'm tired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if I'm hungry and tired, that's not going to go well. <laughs> but now that like, we've kind of like discussed how we work together and like, we've like actually spent like a solid, like 12 hours of like working um, where I've taken like a nap in between. I'm like, I need to take a nap because I am getting like <laughs> sleepy and I'm, it's time for my Betty by time. Okay. I have to go for my mid afternoon nap. Um, everyone kind of like, we sort of learned how we work and where we need to like be, um, gentler to each other and more strict at some times, um, to help each other work best. Um, so now these guys know that like when I'm getting cranky, it's usually because I'm either hungry or I'm tired. <laughs> so they're like, Julia, do you want food? And then I eat and I'm like, this is great. We're having such a great time. We're, woo, we're, we're, we're popping, <laughs> you know? Great. Um, like an app that's on our phone that reminds us that we haven't eaten either. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah. touching on that, um, another different thing about us is we all work and rest very differently. Very differently. Um, for Julia, she will work really hard and then rest like really hard. And then like, it's like a pattern, like it has to go in equal chunks. And then whereas for me, I like work really hard in the beginning and then I burn out and then I, I can finally rest. And then I do that again. And, and then surely it's the opposite. She plan, 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 makes everything, everything perfect. And then finally does it at the end. So half the time we're not working at the same exact time so yeah. at first it was like how come you're not working and I'm the only one working and everyone <laughs> felt that equally and then at the same time it's like I want to rest but they're working so I have to keep going so we would burn out like in a beautiful twisted way um <laughs> but then when we finally found out okay like it's okay if I'm working while they're resting because we have different patterns like it became a lot uh easier to notice that we all work equally well and hard we just have different habits yeah i mean that's the true testament of like a team working is like realizing how the others work and not being like you're not working like me why aren't you it's like we, we each can accomplish things differently and if the final product is as amazing as the things that are on your site then it's obviously working now oh. let me just say joyce all that behind you is your products and stuff these are all things you make and are for sale on carpos yeah. i just finished my apple earrings they're apple slices nice <laughs> and um these are my baby carrots and there's the red onions and there are the caterpillars and these are the macaronis oh yes they are the yeah. big macaronis <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome all right let's go to one of these fast questions let's see okay we did that one what are your roles in the collective what was the fun one okay i like this question and then we'll go out to to the panel and to the audience this one was submitted by someone's sister by a sister out there joyce's sister no <laughs> i like this one it's the first one on the list uh, how would you like to fill a whole gallery given the chance? Oh, okay. That's a good question. <laughs> That's yeah. for all three of you. Let's think if you had like a gallery show, Carpos Collective show, how would you fill it? With Ooh, what? This, is a, this is really interesting because in a gallery setting, we're quite different. Um, Joyce is known for her performance art. Um, oh, wow. And I, I love my large giant surrealistic landscapes like at least four by four feet sort of large wow. size and then um and julia loves working small illustrative um narrative pieces so it, it's quite different and i think um if i were to envision it for us i would 
uh, definitely string together the net narrative that um, Julia is so good at and string it throughout the scenery that I can provide um, and then have like a centerpiece of uh, Joyce's um, uh, performance. So yeah, and yeah, and um, like we can probably link to one of her performance pieces at one point. <laughs> Ooh, maybe we yeah. could cut to one right now through the magic of editing. Oh my yes. god, magic of editing! Yeah, <laughs> she does like these like super cool. She's like okay all the time. She's like, I'm just gonna try this random new thing. And I'm just gonna be like, and then awesome she's so at good. It. <laughs> yeah, she's like, good. oh, I'm just gonna become a rock climbing master. Sure, no problem. And then she's like, oh, I'm gonna be an aerial silks artist for some reason. Yes. And then like like just like all these random things. I'm like. How, you're so like buff like what the hell like, that's <laughs> awesome so meanwhile I'm like sitting on my couch like drawing like oh god <laughs> you're exercising <laughs> I, I but I will not exercise if it's not artistic <laughs> oh I'm gonna I'm gonna use that yeah <laughs> No more squats, only exactly. silks and only beautiful twerking. Yes, <laughs> it's only the most beautiful of twerking. Yes, <laughs> yeah. but awesome. I think Shirley like nailed it. Like exactly. I, I would imagine a full immersive experience. I would have yeah. like. I don't know some kind of performance with Joyce because I would not perform. I am not. No, please. I'm down. Look at me. <laughs> Oh, don't look at me um I'll you i'll make you a paper mache the, the death the, the death bird mask <gasps> i would i would do it if i had a mask on i know you I, <laughs> like if i had like some big animal head yes on top i would i would do some kind of performance yeah. work i sure would yeah um it would be like i would have like ah uh, just like you can go like around pecking at people who are mean <laughs> <laughs> And, and then when people get mad, you'll be like, oh, no, I need this Start to happen. Art. And I'll offer them like a little flower from my from my little basket that I carry yes. after I offend them. You yes. know, like a very immersive, very surreal, odd experience yes. that will have maybe like zines or like books to take away at the end. Nice. And like, I, I love art that you can take home with you. That's yes. like free. I went to um, this... Um, exhibit i don't know if us the american people who are listening are um familiar with the nuit blanche which is um a citywide art festival that happens in toronto not this year because yeah this not not this year but every year there is this huge um citywide uh, art festival that happens it happens in multiple buildings all around um the city and it happens all night so you start awesome. at sun sun sundown and then you walk all around the city to go to all these different art exhibits and i remember this one that was really really cool and it was this big room and it was filled with ceramic spearheads and everyone was allowed to take one home Oh my god! And it was so cool. Like just yeah. the fact that you can—I forget what the meaning of the spearheads were, but like <laughs> yeah. I have the spearhead, this oh little beautiful ceramic spearhead that is on my desk—not on my desk, on my bookshelf. And I just remember taking that home, being like, "This is so cool!" Like that you get to remember this years and years later that you didn't have to pay for. It was free. You go in there, you take one, and it's like this honor system. And I just I something like that. I would love to incorporate something like that when we have money. That's actually right now we don't have any money. That's actually what I want to do. Um when I think of my ideal way to display it, I want it to be super accessible. And so whenever I imagine it, it's for some reason in the middle of Eaton Center or it's like a little shop in the middle of Toronto. And and it's so like sticks out like a sore thumb because it has nothing to do with what like the layout of everything else is but I want it to be so that um yeah everyone's art is around the walls and then maybe like I can have sculptures made out of paper mache like in the middle like weaving around that kids can literally just go into like climb around and then at the end of the show I want everyone to bring um like a little cutting tool and just cut pieces of the sculpture away and then I'll make them into earrings or like into jewelry and they can wear it forever and the cool thing about my paper mache is like if you cut through it you can see like the thousands of layers of paper between the paint and it looks so cool um so there's that but another thing I thought about was I would love it if um in the middle of a mall there was just like a place where you could sit down and we teach you how to make stuff 
Like you literally come in, you can buy our stuff, but also you can make it yourself. So like we have all the equipment there for you. You can like make it and then just take it home. Or you can get like a point card where like you make stuff and leave it with us. So you kind of like gave us labor and then it's a point system. So you can rack it up to like what you can buy. So you can basically buy art for free, like trading labor and stuff like that. So I really love, love that immersive interactive quality about like showing art. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, tell your sister, great question, because <laughs> Thank you. that is all amazing. Uh, the, the fact of like giving away art and, and taking the art gallery like off the wall and into like people's hands is such a good, because, because then you remember it forever. Like, yes, okay, maybe if you bought a painting, you might be like, damn, I spent 5,000 bucks on that. It's amazing. But then you're always be like, that thing was so expensive. But then if you have something free, you're like, this is like, so cool. I'll always remember this day. I got this spearhead and it's like, so cool. You know, it's like, that's amazing. I love it. Bringing it off the wall. That's the thing. Vans off the wall. Off the wall. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's go to our first question from the gallery. We've got a new guest joining us, Ashley. What Ooh. up, Ashley? She is not ready for that. She's like, woo. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so our first question from the audience is from our friend Jerome, who you all know, author of such books as Troop 44, The ABCs of Haya. Oh, he just there, happens there. to have it there. I just perfectly I, timed I, you oh, on it just so, happens. <laughs> <laughs> so casually, <laughs> <laughs> buy my things. <laughs> yeah. it, just, it just happened there. Uh, yeah, so. I can see, like, I think everybody can see that uh, you guys are very passionate about your work. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, what are some of the things that you guys do? Uh, what are the strategies that you guys have for whenever uh, that kind of honeymoon phase kind of kind of passes, right? Because everyone's excited to start. Everyone's excited for the planning part. Like, you you all work differently. And I was just wondering if you, there's something that you guys do as individuals or something that you guys do as, 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 as a team to kind of like bust, bust through that, like that, uh, uh, that week before Christmas type, type feel of uh, like trying to, uh, when you're hitting that wall. Yeah. So I think um, we've definitely hit that a couple of times throughout especially when we stay overnight to work together and like power through projects that's happened a few times um, I think it's just really crucial like what we were saying before to keep each other's habits in mind um, and to always uh, be kind you know like the main thing is to be understanding and be kind and understand that if something doesn't feel right between us, like a, a, we have to air it out and we have to communicate. It's very, very, very important to not bottle anything because um, that would definitely corrode just, not just our relationship, but what our work ethic as well. Um, and then like, secondly, is just like giving each other the space that uh, we all need individually because we are all in different phases of our creative process. Um, so yeah, so definitely just keeping in mind and um, communicating for sure, my main two things. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, I've noticed that in the beginning when we were forming our collective and we were trying to find like our identity, we did look to a lot of different collectives who were successful. And we also always felt a little bit of, oh, shouldn't we be doing what they're doing? Like, shouldn't we be doing like this and explore this? We should try everything. But then I think we've developed a really good system of saying no to things that are not um, true to our core, not life-giving, not um, not therapeutic, I guess, in a way, because I realize a lot of the projects that I personally start, if they're not feeding to me and if they're not true to who I am, I, I lose interest in it or the honeymoon phase ends and I'm just like, why am I doing this? It's such a waste of time. But then if it's actually something we truly believe in, it's like, okay, I can take a step back from it, but I'm always gonna be interested in finishing this project because it's so closely knit to what I believe in at the end of the day. And so I think that's also true for us. Like we are, we really edit down what we, what we three wanna commit to now. And so that really helps prevent the ending of the honeymoon phase at all sometimes. 
And I think yeah. another thing is just having each other to talk about it. Like, for example, if I have a project that's been dormant for a really long time, it's been on the back burner. And then I just like once in a while mention it to them or maybe like it'll be Julia being like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then I'll tell her and then she'll be like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And just the fact that another cre cre creator or creative is interested in my work and is like glowing because of it, it kind of gets me hyped up about it too. So things like that, yeah, help a lot. I also find that like um, in the beginning, um, the delegation of work, it starts to feel like for me anyway, at least, um, I have a problem where I'm like, I want it to be even. I want everything to be equal. I work this amount, you work this amount, you work this amount. And that's that. We're all going to be equal and we're all going to work the same amount. But the thing is, is that um, people work differently and at different paces. So something that could take me a super, super long time could take Joyce like 10 minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think recognizing what we're good at, um, that people take their time on certain things and people take faster in other ways, um, understanding that it's not going to be like punch in nine out, not like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I work eight hours. Like that's not how creative work is. So like just understanding that people take different, um, have different processes um, that take different amounts of time and delegating the processes that like make us feel bad or like make us not happy. Like we don't enjoy it. So like, for example, like maybe I'm not super interested in editing or whatever, or like designing or something. And then I bring it up to the group. I'm like, Hey guys, I'm doing this thing. I have this project. I hate this part. Does someone else want to do it? And then Shirls will pipe up and be like, Oh, I love that. I'll do that. No problem. You know? Um, so like, I think we're, we're planning on doing a comic book and we were talking about this after the um the Whitcalf um panel um and we were talking about how we're gonna do this really cool um I don't know how, how do we describe it it was like I do like some characters and then Joyce is gonna come in afterwards and, like cut things up and Shirls is gonna like design and edit the panel it's gonna be like like a true collaboration but it's gonna be like a three-step process where Cheryl's does the first part, sends it to me. I do the next part and then I send it off to Joy so that it's not like anyone's waiting on the next person. Like, hey, like, are you finished this panel? Can I work on it yet? It's like, once you pass it off, it's like, okay, now they can take their time and they can spend three months on it because that's how long it's going to take them to do it or two weeks because that's how long it's going to take them. Um, so I think just kind of like understanding um, each other's work habits and at the end of the day kind of just checking in and like reminding like oh these are your friends check in on their mental well well-being and their health and their you know their family life make sure that they're you know doing okay because they can't work if they're not doing okay so yeah. I guess just keeping in mind that like these aren't just your colleagues these are your friends and you have to like treat your friends with like respect and ask them like, hey, do, do you need to take a break? Because if you need to take three months off to like, you know, deal with shit, like you can do that. Like, well, it's okay. We'll, we'll take it. That's fine. You know? Yeah. Awesome. Jerome, does that uh, answer your question? Oh yeah. And it brought up a whole bunch more. So those are the best kinds <laughs> of answers. So thanks guys. Thanks Jerome. Um, yeah, I was wondering to that point, when you guys started versus now, like, were you working in the same area a lot of times? Were you working together? Like, would you hang out in like a shared space and create? And now it's a little different because of um, COVID-19 or is it, um, or have you found a new way? Like with me and the guys here, we've been, we do, do Zooms at night and we hang out and we draw and chat and stuff like that. Do you guys do some of that or? We definitely haven't. Um done too much since the quarantine uh, together. And yes, definitely before we would get together physically and uh, be in one space so that we can all kind of focus. Um, and at one point, Joyce was actually in the US <laughs> for a little while. So we had to really work with her not being here. Um, so we did already develop some skill sets of communicating through virtual and um, and, and working through that and she would like 
send her work here and we can sell it in Canada and things like that. Um, yeah, so now we're definitely going to, yes, stay virtual. We do still do our meetings online all the time. Even before uh, quarantine, we still did uh, meetings on a regular basis just to touch base with everyone and make sure that we're all, you know, like on the same point and moving forward. Um, and yeah, so uh, same, same, but different. <laughs> Yeah. essentially I think uh it really helped for us to rotate three different means of meeting like doing work together like sometimes we would have just you know regular zoom meetings and just leave each other on and work together and like have hardcore like meeting sessions be like oh let's apply for this grant let's work on this project that kind of stuff and then there was the other type which was really cozy we would like meet in a cafe and just like do our own work together get to know each other on like a deeper level and then there was the third type where we would literally go to one person's house and just crash and like work non-stop for like um a few days and i think it was healthy that we rotated that and didn't lean on just one form of that because i think each one of us benefited differently from those three methods um i know shirley doesn't like necessarily um she's really good at working on collective stuff with the collective but if she's working on her personal stuff she prefers to have like a home office space and like the working in front right am yeah, i yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you're right on point yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah so cool 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 all right our next question from the audience comes from one of my favorite friends jason lapidus the man of the minute who's working on his pages for a new book or perhaps a Star Wars pinup, <laughs> but he is a great person. Time to be great, bud. Oh, thanks. No pressure. No. I, no I was pressure. wondering, and I'm always interested with with, with different with different creators about uh, leveling up. About when you have those things that happen in your life, people you meet, someone who says something that then you notice either inspires you to make a change in your process, or you know you get a new tool and all of a sudden you're you're your ability to, uh, you know, generate what you're hoping to generate it improves in some way. So I'm wondering if you have any, anything in your, in your recall about a time recently when you've like leveled up and in what area of your work have you leveled up and what was it that brought that about? If you can recall something, please. And thank you. <laughs> Great. You want me to go first? Surely you go first. Surely you go first. Surely, yeah. surely yeah. being, being my town mate we both were, we're living in the same town surely wow. yes. <laughs> yeah that's okay. a small world yep um yeah so uh definitely for me on a more technical level speaking um i am really grateful for a lot of guidance that i did receive in ocad because in art school a lot of things are very conceptual based um and when it comes to technicalities it's more based on your own process and development and research so, uh, but I have had um, the privilege of having a couple of profs that really guided me in the essence of um, ob observation, I think is the main part as an artist. Uh, and because my background is um, design and mostly traditional art, uh, I've been painting and drawing for most of my youth up until now. So. Um, yeah, so to me, there was this one moment I remember really clearly when I was doing life drawing and we were doing, we were practicing a lot of different skill sets. And like, you always wonder why you do these really random exercises that in art school that you're just like, okay, but how does this help? Like, you know, but, and I remember doing uh, one where we were just tracing the shapes in the face and um, something just clicked for me, something just clicked and I saw things differently, the way that I see people. And I think at one point it just turned into me, turned me into a bit of a stalker wherever I went <laughs> because I would just start staring at things and people. And I'm just like, oh, I never noticed these kind of shapes in like someone's facial structures or muscle mass or just like this general architectural structure of the scenery it completely changed the way that I looked at things. Uh, so in, in a technical perspective, that definitely helped me level up and helped me also be able to recall from memory a lot of things um, in terms of like uh, when I really needed a reference, it also helps if I can't find a reference right away. So, yeah. Nice. 
Um, I do that too, man. I got it. I almost got in a fight with a guy one time because I was like, hey, I drew you. And he's like, what? Are you kidding me? Why? He he crumpled it up and threw it away immediately. He's like, don't ever do that again. I'm like, wow. I would be so flattered. I'd be like, (laughs) draw me again. (laughs) I had to work with him. Like I had to continue to work with him too. And I was not a nice person. How bad was your drawing? (laughs) It was good. (laughs) I'm kidding. I was like, are you kidding me? No, no, no. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Julia. Not sorry. Not the heartbreaking. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't let it affect me too much. I would. I, yeah. I would. I, I didn't I it, like, like him don't anymore. Don't like but... my kids. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I guess. Okay, so I can, I can sort of remember this thing that really it really changed the way my process works. So preface, okay? Ever since I was like in high school, like long time, okay? My art teachers, everyone would be like, you need process work. You need color studies. You need to like sketch this thing a million times before you do the final. Me? Nah. You know what I would do? I would do the final and I'd do the sketch work after so I could (laughs) get the mark for it, okay? I didn't understand what the reasoning for doing color studies were. It didn't help me didn't I was like this is dumb I'm just gonna do the exact same thing the here twice like wh- why there's no point point. and I just found the process of like doing all these 50 million thumbnails and like 10 color studies very annoying and very boring because I usually would do the, the first color study and it would be good and then I would do the other color studies and I'm like okay yeah what if I put purple here and then it would be like all the other ones would be ugly and then I was in thesis and I remember exactly which, ooh, I might even have the sketchbook that I, that changed, changed it for me. Ooh, it's one of these. We can Happening. actually see she the She said this was gonna up. happen. She yeah. put everything she possibly could think of as a proc next to her because she knew she would get up and squirrel, but she's like, no, I know it's gonna happen again anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I like so- like squirrel as a verb. That's- yeah. <laughs> so when I was in you thesis, <laughs> I was working on this painting and I could not figure it out. I read what I usually do is if a painting doesn't work or like an illustration doesn't work, I do the whole thing and then I throw it out and then I start over. This is true. (laughs) Like I'll spend like six hours on a painting and be like, well, that was trash. Start over. Let's go. And I could not for the life of me figure out this painting. It was driving me absolutely bonkers. And I remember my prof saying like, Julia, just, um, do some sketches, do um, a color study in your sketchbook and you'll figure it out. And I didn't believe her. I was like, no, that's not going to happen. Um, I don't do color studies. It doesn't help me. I don't find any value in it. And then I did this one color study for this painting that was driving me absolutely nuts. I, I can't find my sketchbook. The one that I have, they're all the same color. They're all black mole skins. Oh, <laughs> So I don't know which one it is. It's one of these, but I don't see it. But anyway, I did this color study and it cha- like, I don't know what it, what happened. This is like, I, I was in school for six years. The last year, thesis, final semester, literally like two months before I graduate, I do this color study and I'm like, oh my God, color studies, color studies. And everyone's <laughs> like, yeah, I know. And I'm like, no, color studies. They're like, yeah, I know. I, I lost it. I, I, I couldn't believe like how helpful it was to have a little ugly thing in your sketchbook to tell you that, oh yeah, this is going to work out. Like that was when I like leveled, like that's, that's what I remember leveling up. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> like damn color studies. They actually help. They actually do something. I, that I, I lost my mind. So I guess For those people who are like me and never saw any value at all, at all, not even remotely, it was a waste of your time. Sometimes you don't need the process. Some, okay. I will say sometimes you're like, better just go in fresh, you know, just go for it. Have a good time. Sometimes it'll turn out great. A lot of my paintings look like that, but when you're stuck and you have to work on something that you know has meaning, it has to be right. You can't, it's not like a a stupid panel that like is just like super tiny, meaningless in the grand scheme of things. When it's like a key piece that has 
a lot of potential to be like a really cool thing. You got to do that color study, dude. Yeah. You got to do that little <laughs> ugly thing with like your paint and use the actual paint that you're going to do. Cause I, I, my problem was I don't always be like, Oh, I'll use pencil crayons or something like, like something else, See? you know? See. Yeah, some like other random like utensil and be like, oh yeah, this blue is going to be the same as the watercolor that I'm going to use. It's not the same. It's not the same. Use the same exact materials that you are going to use in the final and do it small and ugly. And it helps. Oh my God. It like literally like 12 years in, I'm like, oh, color studies help. Oh yeah, I got it. Like, I'm so dumb. <laughs> like that's all I could say that's the one moment that I can remember that I was like oh shit like oh, dear, dear, color studies they wild <laughs> and now my sketchbook is like very colorful I do color studies all the time now and they're just they're fun I just nice. yeah so nice, that's Julie. what I can remember yeah. my my one like thought after that would be like just to paraphrase from Mr. Miyagi from Karate Kid because you're you're talking about how that you you weren't a, I mean you didn't say you weren't a good student, but you're kind of getting at the city that, that you, the teacher wasn't able to convey to you the importance of doing these process steps. Yeah. So Mr. Miyagi would say, "No such thing as a bad student, bad teacher." <laughs> right? Because you yeah. know what? Some some students really um, don't need to be told why they're doing what they're doing. They just follow instruction, and that's wonderful. They're easy for teachers, but a lot of students it sounds like you and definitely like me. I need to know what the object of the game is before mm -hmm. I know how to play. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like OCAD for me was a disaster because we're doing all those exercises and I can't connect the exercise to the thing I want to make. Yeah. And yeah. if you can't, you know, it, it just, so that everything felt pointless. And then it's a series of just feeling frustrated all the time because you're not doing the yeah. thing you want to do. Cause I can't connect color studies to the art that I want to make. So like, it, it, yeah. So that, that teacher. Yeah, I, I I totally relate to like what you just said. Like I was I was getting so frustrated because my my teachers would always be like, oh like um you know your final was pretty good but like your sketches are like like where's all your sketches and I'm like uh, I didn't do any sketches and they're nice. like what the heck you know and then and then when I was doing my thesis like the sketching process wasn't like oh hand it in at the same time as your painting it was week one. I'm going to look at your sketches. Week two, I'm going to look at your sketches. And only on the last week of the first semester, you hand in your painting. So if you're not doing any sketches, you're not doing anything and right. you're going to fail the class. So I was kind of just like going through the motions of like, you know, doing things like this where I didn't care. This was, this was semester one sketchbook. I can't find semester two sketchbook. It's somewhere in the huge pile of black moleskin sketchbooks. But this is what I was doing before. I would do this and show my teacher and she's like what is this and I'm like I don't know I hate <laughs> sketches I don't want to do this and she's like add color and I'm like okay I'll add color and then I'll do like a single little thing of color and she's like that's not enough and I'm like oh but what's the point it's just wasting time it's not wasting time it's not yeah the other thought I'm having about that is also like the, this when, when you have you know, 20, 30, 40 years of experience, and you're trying to teach a student in three or four years, everything that you've learned. Mm -hmm. Like teachers often forget that we learn certain lessons when we hit like year 20. Yeah. You know, we don't learn all lessons in four years. Like we, there's some things we're only going to figure out through our own messing it up for two decades, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like it's me, hard to teach. You can't really yeah. teach. It's like literally like, because I, I switched programs so I was in school for six years like <laughs> going through six years of school and only recognizing the potential of process in the last semester right like <laughs> what happened <laughs> why did, like <laughs> that's awful like someone should have like I mean I guess I guess sometimes it just takes time. Like, I guess in some ways, like I didn't have like awful teachers. Like there were some teachers who were literally, they popped like, Ooh, Tavis Coburn popped, Sarah Snyderhan popped. Okay. There's some teachers that just like slayed. Um, but I still didn't really understand. I think sometimes those lessons you have to learn by doing. Mm -hmm. 
and it'll only click for you when it clicks for you, like yeah. randomly, yeah. you know? Yeah. It doesn't matter how many times someone will say it in a certain way. It won't make sense until you come to that ugly painting that you can't get right until you do that ugly cut or color study in your sketchbook that you can't find anymore because it's somewhere hidden in the giant like pile of moleskins that I like literally all I have are, are black moleskins. <laughs> How can I find anything in here? I can't find anything. <laughs> Write a label on the side. I, yeah, Writing? I should. I mean, I tried to do stickers so that I could be like, oh, this sticker yeah, nice. is from this year, but I, no, it's not enough. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> What about Joyce? Joyce? Did you have a yeah. Joyce? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Eva. Uh, for me, so I have, it's a personality thing where I have to know, I, I have an existential crisis every single day um, and it hits at different times of the day. So you never really know when it's going to hit. Um, but because of that, I developed a coping mechanism of like, going back to what I believe, which is like, I believe in, you know, I'm Christian. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the gospel and that kind of stuff. And there's a specific covenant in the Bible that like, if I walk through it, like everything in the world makes sense. And like, I have utter, like it just clicks for me. And so whenever I have an anxiety attack or an existential crisis, I do that. But because I had to do that ever since I was a kid and apply it to every single situation, I always knew like, who I was. I always knew what I wanted to do, unfortunately. Um, so when I went into OCAD, I, I already knew what I wanted to make art about, what I wanted to do, what I was good at, what I was bad at. But then they never let me do it. Like <laughs> every time I'm like, I want to do this. They'd be like, oh, that means you should try that. And I'm like, okay. And then I'll try because I, I'm very obedient. Um, they'll be like, I'll be like, oh, I'm, I want to try uh, using oil paint only for like a little bit because I want to master it. They'd be like, that means you should experiment with collage and acrylic. And I'm like, when, like I'm learning everything except what I came to school for. Um, and all of my art kind of, because another thing that really drove me nuts was every single class made me do a presentation of about artists that I was inspired by. And that's cool and all. I'm inspired by so many different artists, but that's almost all we did. And we didn't have time to research ourselves um, because we had to research other artists so much. Mm. And I really was looking forward to them forcing me to research myself on their terms, to give me tools to translate myself onto an art form um, more efficiently and more in a way that was readable to the audience instead of being in my own little abstract world. And so that was really unfortunate. But I thought, truly, when I get to thesis, my last year, they won't make me just do a presentation about like artists I'm inspired by anymore. Lo and behold, like <laughs> in a six hour studio class where you were just supposed to come and paint, they spent three hours doing presentations about artists that you are inspired by and then they would talk for the next two hours and then you had one hour left to actually paint and, and you know how it works you set up for 30 minutes you pack up for 30 minutes so I actually like I, I was in tears because I never dropped a co course before I was a keener I was like anyways I cried and I dropped that course I shook the professor's hand and I told him everything that was wrong with him and I stormed out of there <laughs> I had never done that before. And then um, for thesis, I, I was like, you know what? I give up like trying to make work that will please my professors, um, trying to become one of the greats. And I looked at my sketchbook and all of it didn't look like me. It all looked like fan art of my favorite artists, like fan art of like Sargent's work. Like none of it was, I guess, like inspired by me and my walk and my, my journey. And so I, I gave up. Um, and I just started writing really well to justify how this was inspired by other people, but actually it was just all me. And, and I sat down and, and, I, and I was like, you know what, my whole life I've been making work with paper mache because it's what I have. My whole life I've been like sewing together old clothes that were donated to me. Like my whole life I've just been using what I already had. Like even as a kid, I remember um, I didn't have a drawer system to store all my little like collected found goods that I wanted to make into art. So I don't know if you know, if you know those spam containers 
like the, mm -hmm. the, the fake meat could do, yep. Uh, <laughs> I would cut exacto knife like slits on the on on the cap and so that the spam container would slide in and out and I would glue the, the cap to the bottom of my desk. So there were like a million spam containers I could use as drawers wow. and like put little like trinkets in and, and stuff like that. So I would make weird steampunk stuff with stuff I found in the trash, like because that was all I had, that was all, what I did. And then at a certain point, I was so done with thesis, the professors were going on and on about like, it's not all about you. You have to find um, people you're inspired by. There's nothing new under the sun, which I com which I disagree with yes, respectfully. <laughs> but at a certain point, it clicked and I stood up in the middle of class. Like, it's a huge class, like so many people. And, and it's like a movie theater seat seating. So it's like, blah, 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 blah. like and then the, pe the, the professors are tiny in the front and then there's like a huge projector. I stood up and I was like, guys, I get it. I get what they're trying to say. And then I, I was like, they're not saying, who does your art come from? Like, who do you want your art to look like? Like, who are you copying? Who are you? They're not saying that. They're actually saying, and I don't know why they don't say this and they're tricking us, but who do you wanna be in a gallery with? Like. Who do you want to display your art next to? Like one day, for some reason, if you find yourself in art heaven and like you can choose any artist in the world to display your work next to or like run a store with or like collaborate with. And I knew this because of I had worked with these girls. If you were to make your dream collective with any artist and creative in the world, who would you choose? And I'm like, okay, I get it now. Like, who do you want to be challenged by? Like, look at their art and be like, hey, I make that. How can I make mine better the way they make there's better in a different way. And I don't know if I'm explaining it better than those professors had explained it to me, but just knowing, okay, I am not supposed to worship them like gods. Like I am an equal human who may not have, you know, ground as much as they did. Of course, I'm not even saying my art comes close to their level, but I'm my own person and who do I want to stand next to is what they had been asking me this whole time. And that like blew my mind because I didn't have to please anyone anymore. I didn't have to make my art so that it could finally be like, be like, oh, this person says, congratulations, Joyce, you had finally reached my level of artwork and I, I see you little grasshopper. Like it's no, <laughs> like it's a message I can send out to, into the world. I can make my work and other people will be like, oddly, I see myself in that like, yo, we're kind of the same. and. And that's what I wrote my thesis paper on. I'm like, okay, like art is a form of communication. Like um, I compared it to the, the passage in the Bible where I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but uh, when the, after Jesus evaporates, <laughs> that's not what really happened, but um, the disciples are in a room. They're like, oh my gosh, what are we doing with our lives? And then they suddenly get tongues. And so um, they go out and preach the good news to people and they all think they're drunk and crazy, but some people actually understand because they started speaking the gospel in different languages that they didn't know how to speak. And then all the people who were from different countries at the time because of this cultural celebration were like, yo, why is that dude speaking my language? And like, I don't know if I agree with the sermon or whatever they're preaching, but like, yo, that dude's speaking my language. And I think that's what art and fashion and wearables and all that kind of stuff is because it's like when I was doing my thesis project where I was like all tied up with the the aerial silks um and my wearables people from the BDSM community came up to me and they're like yo why are you speaking my language like you're preaching about a completely different thing that that I worship with and oop, my ear fell off <laughs> you you worship something completely different from what I worship but you, you're speaking my language. And so we were able to have like a really cool conversation or like that guy who walks down the street in like the super short um, uh, skirt with the Hello Kitty bag and the wings. Like, I love him so much. Um, he like, I'm, whenever I see him, I'm like, yo, you're speaking my language. And, and that's what it means to exist with other creatives. And that blew my mind. And so that's when I leveled up. Nice. Awesome. Thank you guys. That was what a great question, uh, Jason. I that was great. Because everyone's got to have that time. And you know, it's great when you can have a few of those too, where you're kind of like, you get this realization and you have this thing and you're like, I will never create like I used to. I, I cannot even like I couldn't even do that if I tried create the old way. And now it's just like, my mind is totally changed. My view is totally changed. I have a new 
pencil grip. I have something new. It's just like Jason. That's what I was expecting. Masking fluid. Masking fluid. (laughs) fluid. (laughs) I was expecting a short answer like mine. Like uh, I started using these erasers going top because they they don't block the letter that tells me what pencil I'm using. But my other pencil, (laughs) the eraser blocks the letter, so I have to go like this every time and look. And then I got these erasers of different pencil and like I leveled up. That okay. was the whole thing. That was your <laughs> that was my talking about technical thing. Uh, yeah. I, no, I used just, to carry just... around, I used to carry around these giant, like, I don't know, giant things in my in my little bag every day because I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna find on the ground that I can turn into earrings. Oh, wow. And then now I, you have a utility belt. Brilliant. <laughs> and then my partner bought me these and they're tiny. And now oh. I can finally carry them around. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Without breaking my back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. For me, if it's like okay. technical, st- sorry, if it's just for technical stuff, for me, it's literally just like going from like a mildly expensive paint <laughs> to a really expensive paint. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then you just get 50 of them and then you have no more money. (laughs) That's, that's, that's my technical leveling up. (laughs) Just, just waste all your money. (laughs) All right. Awesome. Um, Let's go to our next panel member, Rick Lopez, visionary creator of the power, Rick Lopez. Thank you, Eli. Uh, My brain's here. It's here. It's all good. Hey, Julie. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Joyce. Hi. Hey. Okay, so um, you guys answered a lot of the questions that I was like, I kept having a question and they kept getting answered. <laughs> but um, really, it just, for me personally, when I met, like, because I was in my own little bubble just working on stuff by myself. And when I met these guys and some of the other people that we that we communicate with, like, often, like, that's when I really felt like I leveled up. And uh, the there's like a like obviously iron sharpens iron and I really feel like it was it was also a fortuitous moment when you got when you three met in um in your class you know which is pretty that's pretty cool like all three of you were in the diff like had different um majors and stuff but you're still able to come together and like form this this crazy thing that's insane um I just I don't know I'm just more in awe of it than really with a question like I just think that's so cool because it's 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 really similar to what we have going on in a way just like just how big like uh and how uh just one moment you know one little thing can change a lot of stuff because like honestly like it really changed my life so I can't even imagine like the stuff that you three have like gone through already together this time and I just, I just think that's really cool that's all that's all I have to say it's like really that's awesome uh, respect Rick <laughs> Yeah, that's super inspiring, and like that's that's cool. We see you too. <laughs> well, it's no, like I... not only experiences can help you level up, but like the meeting of people, and and like you said, iron sharpening iron can help you take that next step that maybe mm-hmm. you were a little trepidatious about taking on your own, but now that you got. Oh, I love that word. Ah, thanks. Mm-hmm. Trepidatious. So totally trepidatious, like, yeah. You know, like I, I, like it's like uh, I forgot who had said it, but you know, it's like when your mom's looking at your stuff. Of course, they're gonna say nice things. Like, Ooh, yeah. I want someone to tell me it looks like a piece of shit. Like, you know, I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't really care. Really yeah. Honestly, yes, yeah. That's what I want. Yeah, like, I know what you're thinking. Tell me, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. You're thinking about the corn. Yeah, you're thinking about the corn. The corn. <laughs> the corn. Oh, God, yes. I'm gonna die. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about. Um, we were at, on this artist panel, and then we were talking about. We want someone who we take our our poop to, and they're gonna dig through it and be like, "But look, this kernel of corn." <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, someone who sees the value in our trash. <laughs> so sees the value in our trash. In our. I thought your old light off. Pieces of pieces of crap. Yeah. The corn. Yeah. <laughs> You can find that one golden kernel. Oh, it's so gross. <laughs> and I hate, that, I hate that I'm the one who started this. <laughs> wow, I'm the one who came up with the corn. Yeah. Like, all my friends know I don't like gross things, like nasty, like sounds or like images. Like, I just get grossed out very easily. So the fact that like, I'm the one who did this. <laughs> if my friend Mason or Eric watches this or listens to this they're gonna die <laughs> they're never gonna let me live this down i'm the one who said i want someone to find the corn in my pile of crap <laughs> like, just, oh. 
But the metaphor comes across, I the guess. The metaphor so can... <laughs> works, it though. Works. It does. Because yeah. I think, like, uh, the biggest thing as, like, artists, we're all, we know what this is. You just work at your studio by yourself for, like, eight hours, whatever. You're by yourself. You're in your own little bubble. And it's kind of like this insular world that you can't really get any feedback on, you know? Um, yeah. So it's really... Uh, hard to improve and get better when the only people who are uh, you know commenting on your work are people who live with you and they love you and they want you know you to succeed and they're like oh it's beautiful it, it can't be improved in any way and then you don't improve in any way <laughs> ever yeah. so I think the the best thing is like connecting to like all of you guys and talking to people that are you know other creatives other people that have different talents and experiences that can be like hey like look at like this is really cool but what if you did this instead and then this will do this and then everything will change then your mind is blown because then you can improve and get better right so yeah. i think just like even if you don't like create like an actual collective i think just hanging out with art people yeah, that's the so value real. of community. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. yeah. Anyone yeah. else out there have another question that they would like to ask? Uh, any any burning questions for the Carpos Collective? Oh, Jerome. Jerome does. Ask to unmute. So you guys were talking about. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. No, Burge, go ahead, bud. Burge, Burge, Burge. I just you guys were saying, talking about. Uh, you know comics and everything like that making comics like do you guys have like like an end game plan for you want to go with that i guess in meeting it's like you guys already like lots of people that make comics they make the comic first and then they make things that are like tangible that they can sell you know to help support the comic it's like you guys already have things that are tangible that you can sell in artwork and stuff and then you're making a comic from there like how do those two things or like what's the thought process on how those two things go together we're a pretty eclectic, um, like in terms of what we produce, and uh, that that was and probably still is a little bit of part of the challenge that we have to face in our collective, um, which is focus. And I really like we all really enjoy making things with our hands. So like we love ceramics, we love like uh, Joyce loves working with. Uh, upcycling like paper mache and things like that and I do sewing I've made so many masks in the past few months um and uh yeah so things like that and honestly we're just trying to find new things that always excite us as a project um and because uh Julia is the main illustrator in our group and uh, Joyce and I are not really like we don't practice it the in in the way that she does. And uh, so we really do also want to challenge ourselves. And Julia has always wanted to challenge us as well to kind of push herself into directions uh, that we're not always in the most uh, comfort zones with. And we, that's what we love about each other, right? Um, is to have this um, community and have each other to lean on and to have each other's expertise. Like, for Julia to be able to help us through, like, be like, oh, this is how you can draw a person better um, in a more abstract or minimalized way, in a more illustrative way. Um, and to also help us sort of uh, bring out our own style within these new challenges. So doing comic for us, um, it really was pretty spontaneous. Uh, it came out from our last panel and having talked to you guys, like it got us really worked up about uh, oh, wanting good. to do one. Yeah, so it was pretty awesome. And uh, Joyce and I tend to be a little bit timid about these things, about like, um, uh, about going into fields that we're completely sort of uh, new to, and especially me, like I don't want to speak for Joyce. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, so it's, it's something that's in the works um, and the merch almost has nothing to do with the comic that we're planning to do. It's almost like a okay. warm-up exercise towards maybe a final product. Uh, we just really want to keep challenging ourselves um, and building stuff that we can do collaboratively and keep inciting new things um, and hopefully 
some of these can turn into proper products that we can sell, but definitely it's also to just keep pushing each other forward into new spaces. Yeah. And I guess like right. the way I've always thought about this comic or whatever, like whatever book form, zine form, paper form thing that we make, I think in my head has always been like a compressed version of what we do. Um, like, you know how if you're doing something or you go through a huge life experience, you want to write a book about it? Kind of like that. Like, every time I make something cool with my hands, I'm like, oh my gosh, like one day I want to make a zine about this. Or like one day I feel like a comic would capture this so much better than anything else can. So it's not like we're viewing it disrespectfully, like the art of comic book writing is as like a fling or something like an experiment. Oh, for sure. For yeah. Sure. But I think now that you ask and the more I think about it, I do feel like it's a more organized way to narratively view growth, like the concept of comics um, and to document like a story. So I'm like, I'm really looking forward to how all of our work will become compressed onto like a 2D surface of, not that they have to be 2D, but like- Oh yeah. <laughs> and a more organized aesthetic, yeah. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I for me, the reason why I went into illustration versus like fine art or I don't know, something more like specialized is because illustration and comics can kind of look like anything. I know we kind of have these ideas of like classic Marvel comics. This is how they're going to look like this is, you know, this is the only way to do it. Um, but I follow a ton of artists from like all over the world that are making graphic novels and comics and manga and everything under the sun, um, experimental works, literary, graphic novels. I work at a bookstore. So I'm like mm -hmm. always like on the lookout, like what's, what's new, what's, what's what's coming. Store? Yeah, oh, I work at Chapters. I, I work in Which Brampton. One? So I the, there's, oh. a, I, I know I only, I work in Brampton. So there's only one bookstore and it's like a giant corporation, unfortunately. No, oh, not fine. dissing Indigo. Okay, they have done well to me, but if I could have worked at like a tiny little, like cute, like independent bookstore, there's none in Brampton, so I can't. But <laughs> um, so uh, I totally lost my train of thought. It's gone. It's, mm, new books on the lookout. New books on the yeah. lookout. Oh yes, comics. So I've been trying to explain to these girls that comics can kind of look like anything. They don't mm -hmm. really have to fit that strict, you know, line art, black ink with like the superhero colors you know it doesn't have to look like that it can look mm -hmm. like anything so when i kind of explain this more to them joyce is like oh i could maybe do like collage and like paper mache onto it and cut things up i'm like yeah you sure can mm -hmm. you sure could <laughs> you know <laughs> so i think like after i i'm working on like a little mini comic with um two of my art friends uh mason barnes kraus and uh eric uh Bellinger. Belanger, it's French. I can't pronounce. On Instagram, he's man with a beak. Anyway, <laughs> a plug for my friends. <laughs> um, we're working on like a little comic together about our friend Guillaume, who came from uh, Mauritius, which is a tiny island near Madagascar. And um, I was like, oh, we should do like a little comic about Guillaume. He has such like a cool aesthetic, you know, with his little fanny pack and everything. So um, we started making this comic, and I, after making the first four pages of it. Um, I did the, this kind of like all in ink and everything. Sweet. Um, yeah. I handed it off to Mason and he does the next four pages in his style. And I was like, oh, I love making cool comics with my friends. And I started going to the uh, Toronto Art Jam that Mason goes to a lot um, every Tuesday. Um, and I just, I was like, oh, I want to make friends with these guys. Like I want to do stuff with them and get their input and let them do crazy things to it and try something new because I feel like once you realize that it doesn't have to look like what everyone else does you're free <laughs> you can do whatever you want you know totally. so yeah um yeah I don't know. Totally. sweet thank you yeah. so oh, much yeah. thanks Burge oh that's why man no I, I wish you guys the best of luck with that shit I look forward to it <laughs> oh, like thank you <laughs> <laughs> cool all right jerem you had something there uh yeah so uh yeah th that that was that was really cool um but uh just thinking about you know it's it's year end right it's uh 
it's year end to a year that's like a little bit, you know, it is, it's odd, right? It's odd. I just remember from the, uh, the beginning of the beginning of quarantine when, when it, the extended March break wasn't a March break anymore. And it just, it just wasn't fun anymore. Right. Um, uh, you know, I, I grabbed the pen and I was just like, it's like, ah, I have a little bit, I have more time. I have more time. So I didn't know what to do because I, I, there was just questions in the air. And I, I drew, I drew this and I just, I just kind of wanted, I just kind of wanted to show it off. Right. So it's, I drew this, right. And it's like big dude, God kind of dude. And it says rest, meditate, everything will be okay. I got this because it was like amongst all the negativity that, that was going on. I just decided, I just needed to have like a message to be sent to myself. But then when you're talking about, you have all these friends and like, uh, because of this, uh, I ended up, uh, you know, we ended up con contacting Eli and Eli uh, made a bunch of stuff like this, right? Um, and, you know, with that, we, and then, then I met more people and more people and then it just snowballed. And now we have this whole big, uh, we have our own little bullpen that is, uh, uh, well, it's not really big, uh, little, it's, it, it's 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 worldwide now and including uh people from canada and whitby and that work in brampton um but uh there's been a lot of level, leveling leveling up with uh, like everybody working there and i just kind of laugh at it when i when i look by because i started looking at it and then i was like uh that's not how how folds go i can do folds better now like what's wrong with that hand right <laughs> so it's just uh things like that i was like i've been i've been learning and i think that it's really cool that uh, from all that branching out, you know, we've, we've branched out and met people from like, uh, like from Australia and France and, and actually like working on working on projects together and to find that in the year end, we're, it's we're just coming back to Whippy, right? <laughs> coming back to Whippy. And I thought that was a really cool full circle moment. And to, if you want to, if you want, if you guys want to continue and, uh, and have be like expand your collective and, and, and expand our collective to, to work together there is something that is going on this saturday where you can just bunch up with a whole bunch of people and just keep making a zine and like just more pages and more pages and uh the it's uh this guy um what's his name eli eli schwab i don't know if he's lying or not but the, he runs it. I, I don't know yeah. i i yeah. that sounds vague, uh, vaguely familiar yeah he no no it, it can't be you it's someone yeah. else someone else yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He runs it on uh, like it'll be on 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 Saturday, and uh, the theme is just the theme is going to be twenty twenty, like uh, just you know how you've managed twenty twenty. Uh, you know, I I'm assuming that there might be some people that that want to uh, write some just just like like downer type things on twenty twenty. But I guess as artists, we've all really uh, shined in this uh, uh, shined in this little bubble where everybody wants to escape what's happening in the real world so uh we're creating our own little worlds and uh uh on behalf of eli and cosmic line productions i'd like to invite <laughs> you guys to uh to help uh share and create more worlds with us i would love that sound to. Good, eli? Yeah, yeah yeah i i'd love to because <laughs> I, awesome. I yeah i mean i i started joining the the toronto comic jam and i really found so much value in just just drawing with other people and drawing that didn't mean anything or like matter because usually when I'm drawing, I'm like working on like a big project and it has to be good. It has to be perfect, you know, and it can't be wrong. It has to be good, you know? Um, so going to something that's, you know, just like a community thing, everyone participates, everyone draws this panel and then this panel and it doesn't really matter but it does matter. Do you know what I mean? It's it like, matters. It's like it's like color studies all over again. Yeah, it's like psychologically <laughs> yeah. it matters, emotionally it matters, community-wise it matters. Um, but there's no like deadline, you know. And that yeah. kind of having that freedom is like really kind of liberating when you're kind of a perfectionist and you do six hours on a painting and then you throw it out and then you start over and then you do that five times. <laughs> Don't have to be so precious about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not to be precious. Yeah. Yeah. We just have yeah, fun. Uh, we hang out and spend about three hours, do like a half page sheet. It can really be any size. I can size it in later. We can do, you could make something, Joyce, you could make something with your hands and then just send a photo that we can put that in. in. I'm in. All right. <laughs> yeah, you guys can do whatever, whatever you want. You can draw a four foot by four foot painting and then 
<laughs> send me the photo and we'll put it in there. Julia, you can make your painting, uh, throw it in the trash and then take a picture of your painting in the trash. <laughs> of the Perfect. painting in the trash. Of the trash, yeah. 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 You amazing. know what's funny? I like keep all of like the old ones. So sometimes like I'll be rummaging through the old paintings and I'm like, oh, it's the fish. Oh, oh it's the same fish. Oh, oh it's another one of <laughs> the fishes. It. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> and there's like 10 of the exact same drawing, just slightly different. So maybe this time I won't do so many. <laughs> or I'll just take a photo of the ones that are in the trash. <laughs> of all of them. And we can decide. Yeah. Yeah. You guys can yeah. decide which one. It'll be like, uh, I don't know, like I'd be on our best. <laughs> all right, I'll send you all the link uh, after we disconnect. Is there any other questions from people in the audience? Anything else, anything anyone would like to say or compliments, questions, criticisms that we've already established can be helpful? Oh, Ro? Um, oh, I don't cool. have like a question question, but I really hope that you guys stay art friends for like ever, you know, <laughs> like even if, you guys, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, decide to like, you know, um, go on different paths. I think it's, it's always great when you stay friends, you know, up until however old you get. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of imagine we're in this for the long haul. Like, even if we have an awful falling out and everyone hates each other, eventually I'm going to reel them back in. <laughs> I'm going to find a way to like, like slowly, you know, bring them back. <laughs> so they can't quite leave. It'll be like a, like a little a chain. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like the, um, ah, what is it? Uh, like the, the, the chain in Lord of the Rings that can't break or something. Oh, yeah. They just can't, they, they can't leave. I'll, I'll sneak it in there. <laughs> in my head, we all live in this giant manor and like inhibit, like inhabit like different corners of it and then like we get together down. <laughs> like in, the, in the, the big circle table in the middle of the whole manor yeah that's nice we'll just have uh our art residency forever <laughs> yes yes, yes. Well, like narnia it'll be like we'll live in like a little hut <laughs> and then there will be like a secret tunnel that like connects all of our secret tunnel oh, nice. yeah cool. will there be, will there no, be let's a just small buy, a <laughs> <laughs> buy a farmland buy a farmland build a castle and then, and then connect all the tunnels under boggy's <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, Brent's got a question. Oh, uh, this is kind of a, a strange take off a little bit on what Bro said that I was thinking, you know, in a relationship, you can get in a relationship and it, it dies because you think, well, we're here, this is it. But really relationship is what you do every day. Otherwise, why have one? And so it's got to be that every day you get in and say, I'm in, let's make this work for us. And I was wondering, do you have any kind of thoughts about, have you ever gone through that moment of kind of a, are we really in? And how do you get through that? Because, you know, you see people that are married for two days, you see people who are married for 45 years and you know, that's, that's, that's kind of a relationship. But when you get a collective like this, it's even more complicated. And how, yeah. do you, how do you keep that spark? How do you keep that moving? And I'm not necessarily looking for an answer tonight. Oh, as much as that's a question that I keep on thinking about in, in that creative sphere. How do you keep that going? Um, I, I think, um, especially with um, this relationship in particular, like to these two people, um, I just have to keep on reminding myself that like when I'm, when I'm in an argument with them and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so mad or I'm so upset or they just don't understand me. They don't understand what I'm going through. They don't get it. Um, that I remind myself that like, they're trying, they're trying so, can I swear? Yeah. Sure. Oh, I mean, they're trying, <laughs> they're oh, trying no. so fucking hard to understand me and I just got to give them time. I got to give them the the space to understand why I'm feeling like this. And eventually with that patience, like I'm a very impatient person. Everyone knows this about me. I'm like, let's go, let's get this done. I don't want to wait anymore. Um, but like, I have to remind myself, like 
but they're trying like so little people put that much energy into a relationship I feel like with these two I'm putting in all of this energy and they're putting it in back which is kind of rare a lot of the times like you put in a ton of energy into something into another person into another relationship and that person just can't give it back to you they can't give you that same amount of patience, respect, love, um, and acceptance. And these two girls do give me that. They do put in that. So when I'm upset and I'm like, oh, I should just, you know, end this. What's the point of even working here? What's the point of even doing this with them? I'm like, oh yeah, it's because they fucking love me and they (laughs) care about me and they put a lot of energy and effort into me. And that's why we keep going so I think just like recognizing that that you know they're they're doing what I'm doing and they're upset because they're there's a reason they're upset it's because we're both putting in so much energy and so much love into this so there was a moment where I thought it was all over um it was so I I had done so I wasn't a collaborative person before I was very like perfectionist everything has to be done my own way like I might as well just do it all by myself that kind of stuff um and then I met some people and I tried to collaborate with them and the only way I felt protected was with very good contracts um and then so I almost became this very legalistic very stickler person about contracts. And I was like, as long as I hold on to my side of the contract and I can trust because they signed that they can hold on to their side of the contract, like I will be safe, like nothing will break. And I almost like idolized legalism to a certain point and put it above loving other people, which went against everything. It goes against my religion. Like it goes against everything. Like not yes. faith based on works it's on grace but like I that all of that went out the window I was I like worshipped the, the idea of a perfect contract because I couldn't work with other people but then when with these girls I was like yeah that's why I was like when I came into the collective I'm like it's all about the contracts we have to make a contract and so for our first book um that we were going to make together um the onion boy book that we talked about um in the p- artist panel like I we had created this contract and certain things happened where it didn't work out the way I thought it was going to happen. And then I got really mean and really upset because I felt like they had broken like a a marriage vow. Like I thought the only way that it, 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 like they could prove they loved me was if they followed like the contract they had signed. So it, it became really like a weird, absurd anyways. Um, and then when I realized that that was what I had become and I was valuing paper over like them as human beings and that we are all broken, we're all like, I mean, but then the attitude I had was like, because I broke the contract too, like I'm out. That means we have to be done. So not only was I being horrible and cruel to them, I was also being really cruel to myself by assuming that because I broke my part of the contract that they wouldn't want me anymore either. So I assumed after that fight that we were done. I was like, okay guys, like I'm, I still love you guys, but I'm really sorry like that the contract didn't work out. So I guess we didn't work out. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> we, we're so mad at you right now, yeah. but like we still wanna be together. And I was like, what? But the contract didn't happen. This earring does not wanna stay on. It's a clip on anyways. It's because I did it really loosely. <laughs> This does not speak to the quality of my product. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it does. Because when your emotions are spreading too far, they fall in sim- symbolism of anyway. um, And so they extended the grace that I believe in to me. And they were like, it doesn't matter. Like, pieces of paper don't matter. At the end of the day, we just want to make mistakes together. Like, that's what we're all about. And then I cried so much. Um because I realized that they actually wanted a relationship with me that wasn't on paper. They, 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 they actually wanted like to stay with me even though I wasn't perfect. And I had never, like this whole time as an artist, I thought I had to be this perfect artist 
in order to work with other artists and like prove myself and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, they actually saw me as like a, a broken, trying, beautiful human being. And that really helped. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. And um, honestly, I think we got lucky in certain ways with the fight happening so earlier on in our relationship um, because we really learned through these fights and mistakes that um, just how different we all are and we are very different people all three of us our temperaments are different our habits are different our background different our faith is different like um, we're just such an eclectic group that it took this sudden volcanic explosion to properly melt together um and i was so grateful that it happened so early on so that we could air things out and yeah when joyce was like i'm done i'm out we're just like no fucking way are you out yeah i'm like <laughs> like yeah. okay what <laughs> i'm like excuse me yeah. <laughs> yeah we're just like okay the contract didn't work it just means we have to amend the contract it did not mean that we were going to abandon this project um we were not you're going gonna to abandon, abandon him you're gonna oh, abandon oh, him you can't help this precious him? onion yeah how could and you abandon him <laughs> and we would have never Look gotten here without that explosive um like friction in the beginning so yeah, it really helped us and taught us how to love each other and how to appreciate each other in our lives because um, we're just so different. And we've all been burned before with previous relationships and friends and collectives and partnerships. And um, so we were all coming into this a little wary and not with both feet planted in the ground fully, I think, in the beginning. But I think once that um, fully ignited, and we really got to yell at each other for a little bit and completely cry our hearts out. Um, we definitely were able to come to terms with the fact that like, we're here for each other, we're gonna stay. And we're all committed to, at the bare minimum, stay together as friends, even if collaborations don't always work out, but like these girls are for life, you know. Wishing Aww. you many happy anniversaries. Oh, thank you, Brad. Thank, thank you. you so much, Brad. great question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyone else? Ashley, I see you came on video to ask a question. Nah, just to say hi. Sweet. All right. As we come into the end of the event here, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone. What great revelations we've came across. What amazing, inspiring artistry we've dealt with. It's just awesome. It's been great chatting with you. It was great to pick up where we left off. Uh, at the previous chat and, and um, elaborate on everything. And uh, to wind it out, I just want to go around the horn. We've got a lot of amazing artists here, a lot of amazing people here. So I just figured we could all kind of quickly say what we're working on, what we can, what you can do next, uh, where you can find us and uh, what's, what's new. So uh, let's start with Julia and then we'll just go, I guess we'll go through the list as I see it. So Julia, Sheryls, Joyce, Rowe. And then uh, we'll continue on. Um, so uh, my uh, my Etsy store is finally online. I mean, I made it in like 2017, but I finally actually like posted things in it. So it's live now. It's uh, under my name, Julia Louise Pereira. Got some cool ceramics there, um, some prints, um, zines, a mug several mugs, um, lots of cool little knickknacks and things. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's new and you can always follow me at my, uh, Instagram. Um, it's, uh, Oh Lordy, it's Julia. I, I was thinking about changing that, but then I don't know, people seem to like it. So I think I'm going to keep it. <laughs> it's cool. And once you start, you kind of can't change it. Cause then yeah. Like yeah. I feel like people <laughs> kind of know me as like, Oh Lordy, it's Julia. Like that's, that's my name. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. And I'll, I'll be putting all this stuff on the screen and in the YouTube uh, notes, uh, podcast notes. So if y'all want to check it out, check it out there. Sheryls, where can we find you? Uh, um, I'm on Instagram as Sheryls Shuning and, uh, and that's my main um, fine art page, but uh, I will start adding in all the other things like the um, textiles and uh, yeah, all the new products that will be coming out. 
And you can also find uh, my products on our mutual shop at carpostcollective.com. And yeah, so go have a look and see what you like. All right. Thank you. Joyce. Um, there's a lot of things happening. Uh, <laughs> but as we run through this, one thing, one project, one series that I'm really interested in right now is I'm making these crowns. Um, that are kind of reminiscent of, uh, you know, those doctor's office children's toys that you like play with the, the beads Definitely. and stuff. So uh, I made a red one. I'm going to make a green one that looks kind of like the shape of a broccoli next and uh, maybe a blue one with different colored beads. Uh, I, I was wearing this, uh, I, it was braided into my hair the other day and I was just walking in a park and then this little child was like looking at me with awe and that's my goal in life. Um, <laughs> To make people believe in magic. <laughs> another thing I'm working on is are these uh, gigantic green um, abstract caterpillar earrings. They're going to be like deep green. Uh, I'm thinking maybe even making like large. Uh, if anyone knows the BFG um, by Roald Dahl, yeah, yeah uh, how he had the gigantic um, snozcumber that he had to live on because he wasn't a, a child eater uh, and then he was vegetarian so maybe i'll make those i really like making like storybook uh references and whimsical things so and another thing i'm doing just for fun is i'm making these minecraft swords out of paper mache nice. that i'm going to paint um into my aesthetic because the minecraft aesthetic is you know uh, ugly a little bit grunge <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then um, another thing I'm working on is making gingerbread earrings for Christmas. And uh, yeah. It will all be up on our shop, right? Yes. Joyce? Yes. They, yeah, they will all be all up on the carpet shop. And right now I have it on my Instagram, either Joycey Jody or Joycey Jody Wearables. And oh, what was I going to talk about? Oh, writing. Um, I'm working on this project, the story about a Korean girl. Um, it's a Korean uh fairy tale not in korean in english but with a lot of uh cultural motifs and stories and it's basically my testimony and she is a being with blue hands and blue feet and half laugh and half sob and there's a lot of symbolism in it and my friend is illustrating it right now so that's coming out soon too very cool thank you so much ro what's up I so I just say what I'm working on and where yeah, you can find me. Yeah, just got some plugs. <laughs> stuff. Okay. Um, I am the writer at, or creator of the webtoon uh, Half of the Crown. It's currently got 12 chapters out right now. Um, I am just currently working on that and kind of under another name, um, Azuma Fetty, uh, for another comic that's going to come out for... Um, one of my friends he's the writer of the novel so look out for that <laughs> too uh, and that's kind of about it right now <laughs> nice thanks uh brent anything to plug <laughs> i'm just a mere mortal <laughs> <laughs> a great mere mortal that again i've known for the entirety of my life and uh, i'm happy to have great thanks again for coming brent Jason, man, what you got? Um, I, as always, I'm working on a comic book series called Group of Seven, and uh, I'm working on the new issue for that, but our trade paperback is still available at groupofsevencomics.ca. Real quick uh, for the non-Canadian members of the uh, world here, Group of Seven is like a historical story from Canadian history, no? No. Well, okay, mm. depending on what you mean. <laughs> So Group of Seven is is a famous Canadian artist collective. Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> and we are using the name as the name of our of our of our team of World War One operatives on a secret fictional mission to save the world. And I like how you're like my comic, same as Group of Seven. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the same level we we, right. we can share the name the google search will yeah. surpass well, <laughs> kind of yeah um it, i mean i don't know how, how much you want me to go into it but basically 
we wanted to get a have a title that suggested there was a collective of people that are Canadian that are doing something in history and it's something cultural. There you go. So there was no better Case name. The same thing. No yeah. better name in the world than than Group of Seven for this. And it was just very antithetical to um, a, a grandiose approach that we see from a lot of our, of our contemporaries around the world where they'll call things like the Super Bowl when it's just one country or the World Series when it's just one country and Toronto. Um, we wanted something that sounded humble um, or modest, I should say modest, in that it, they weren't overstating that it was this, the Justice League or the Super Friends. It's just a group of seven. So there was like that play and every time, you know, when we were at events, people walk past our table and we get like the, oh, I like, you mean A.Y. Jackson, Tom Thompson? We're like, kind of, yeah, because A.Y. Jackson is on the team because he really oh, served in World War I. Not. Right. He, he was he was there and, and he participated. Okay. So anyway, so that that series is ongoing and that trade is available and the next issue is coming soon. And I'm also doing a whole bunch of like, you know, Star Wars fan art, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Jason. Hey, uh, on Saturday, I'm hoping to come. Great. And I've, I've been thinking about this 2020 theme quite a bit and uh, I got nothing. So I'm going to come in service. Well, the great I, thing about it is it's so broad. You could do, you can really do anything you want. 2020 for, is. For a guy like me though, that's paralyzing because I can do anything. Therefore, I should, I should be able to come up with the most brilliant thing that any human could come up with because I'm a perfectionist, oh. right? So no. when things are that broad, it's paralyzing for me because yes. I'll never think of something mm. that What's is yes. as genius as my own expectation. Gotcha. Um, yes. So I'm going to come with nothing and help whoever or do anything that if there's a writer in, in the who's there who doesn't have a chance to draw, I'll just draw their thing or who knows what. I, I'm coming there to play. Cool, Jason, man. We're Jason, why don't you just call Julie and work that through, okay? <laughs> yeah. Good idea. Thank I'm you. like, I'm like, oh my god, that literally, I need a brief. <laughs> like, I, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna like casually draw something in my sketchbook yesterday while I was watching uh, Sailor Moon, and I was like, I don't know what to draw. I don't have a brief. I need someone to tell me what to do. <laughs> Right. Like, I can do anything and then I ended up with nothing right. <laughs> so well, hopefully I know. hearing other people's ideas and what we're all doing that'll jog yes. your memory and it hey will. if anything you can just do a Mandalorian or, a, or what about a Fandalorian Fing Fang Foom DeLorean maybe I'll just do Sailor Moon fan art there you go can cool. you draw off that Sailor Moon characters yes oh my yes, god please. <laughs> I might. I mean, I ended up doing like one little Sailor Moon drawing, but oh, sweet. that could be me. Okay. Could be, yeah, you know, it could be. <laughs> so, you know what? Maybe I'll do that next. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Burge, got anything to plug, bud? I know you do. Sure. I think for the 2020 thing, uh, you guys will understand what I'm saying, where it's like, dude, I think uh, bed bugs versus swingers. What do you guys think? <laughs> No, I'm just joking. Oh. Like, are the bed bugs the swingers? Oh, because that's your that was no, your life. yeah. No. <laughs> but uh, no, I've I've got uh, I've got two comics I'm working on. Uh, one is called uh, Authority Parks Parking Authority. Um, the other one is called The Legend of Takokuma. Uh, you can find both of those on or parts of them are on Webtoon, and then I have more extended versions in uh, in tangible uh, Ashcan format. Uh, and also, uh, I make music to accompany the comics. So if oh, you go to so cool. uh, Takokuma on SoundCloud, there's a song for you know the chapters and you know more music and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I'm on Instagram as uh, Uncle Atomic Press. So it's basically under or Uncle underscore Atomic underscore Press. And I think that's it. If you ever need voice actors, I volunteer, please. Oh, right on. <laughs> awesome. All right, Ashley, anything to plug? Ask me in like five years. Oh, but tell All them right. about your plan, your plan. <laughs> um, so I want to be able to do everything. I'm a Jacqueline of all trades. 
but I'm currently at uni for business and I want to, I want to have my own clothing store, clothing store chain, something like that, that, um, that can provide very good quality customer service to people who are shopping for any sort of of uh, size or gender or body shape clothing. I want it to be like an all-inclusive sort of thing, uh, which of course, something like that wouldn't, uh, wouldn't work during the pandemic. Yeah. But I do want it to be both a very hands-on thing, but then also like very useful online long distance tools. So that's something I'm wanting to do long-term but I mean, my interests range from like cooking and uh, beautician work and I want to make video games and I want to do all these things. So ask me in five years. <laughs> we met. Business we met. is the best, uh, the best groundwork to lay for all that. <laughs> yeah. Funny story of how we met was uh, we, uh, my partner went to her school that she's at right now. Um, for a brief moment and it was in Chicago and it's a Christian university and everyone's you know like their fashion is kind of similar um you know homeschooler fashion I mean I was a homeschooler notice um but we were like the only ones I guess of the few like we would like meet in this small like snowy uh round table and we would do like creative stuff together cut up paper and all that kind of stuff she would like i would see her from a mile away because she's wearing like studs everywhere and like fishnet over fishnet and like um leather and like two like boots that were this tall and like yeah she looked like a video game character and everyone would be like hi ashley it was amazing <laughs> So that's the kind of clothing she, you'll, awesome. you'll have to look forward to. She has seen so many different hairstyles on me. So there's that too. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, you got to change. You got to evolve. That's the best way to be. All right, Rick, what's up? She got to plug, bud. Soon. Yeah, soon. Real soon. Um, I'm working on the first issue of my comic, The Power. Uh, it's a four issue miniseries. It's about a boy creating his own comic only to find that there's a realm beyond space and time within his own mind. So it's kind of that whole creation process uh, where we're sitting at the desk and everything kind of melts away as you're creating your own world, in a sense. Um, I'm at Doom Dazed on Instagram. I post my stuff all the time on there. And I'm just about ready to color this first issue. So I'll have that out pretty soon. So, Can't wait for thanks that, you, nice. Of course, man. All right, anyone else here? Uh, that wants to plug. I just want to thank Sonny, Dean, and Lois for being here and listening and hanging out. Go back to the gallery view. We all look so great. It's. I'm so happy that everyone came. I'm taking a screen grab for the album art right now. So everyone smile. All right. Cool. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much to the Carpos Collective and everyone who came out. Uh, my esteemed panel and uh, all the cool peeps that came to hang out. This will be on YouTube. It'll be in my Libsyn podcast feed and I'll send you all the links. I guess we'll see most of you on Saturday. Thanks so much. Thank Peace. you so much, Eli. Right, thank you. Later. Yeah.